Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing The Outer Worlds, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, from the people who created Fallout New Vegas, we have a brand new fantastic RPG game to make you forget about the monstrosity that was Fallout 76. This game has it all. It's got character development, it's got interesting storylines, it's got companions, and apparently, according to the developers, it's had QA playtesting, meaning that there are no glitches or exploits exploits in the game? <sighs> Oh, well, I'm terribly sorry, game developers. Evidently, you didn't search hard enough, because today, ladies and gentlemen, I've got two fantastically cheesy exploits for you. We're going to be looking at the most overpowered character you can possibly create using a simple assemble at home sniper rifle with the ability to critical hit the entire solar system in one foul swoop. That's how perfectly balanced this game is. But alternatively, when you've had enough fun of one hitting all your enemies, why not trade your way to success? And and find a way to get unlimited money in this game. Of course we've got an unlimited money glitch too, come on. It wouldn't be a British exploit video without a good bit of unlimited money. That's what we're all here for. So without further ado, make sure you sat back, you relax, you have a nice warm cup of tea, and hey, if you're outright fantastic and you want to be taken to an outer world with me, then why not like the video in advance? Oh, you majestic person, let's dive into this. Now, I have actually played my entire way through this game, if you can believe it, ladies or gentlemen, to the point where I'm playing a level 19 Riano Keeves. That's right, he's found his way into this game too, ladies and gentlemen, and he has some very impressive weapons. He has two sniper rifles in particular, which are rather exciting. But most importantly, it's the Deadeye Assault Rifle you want to keep your eyes on. Now, there aren't many sniper rifles in this game. To be precise, there's uh, basically two, and only one of them is technically even any good, although the Long Ranger is also pretty spicy. Now this game is fantastic. Basically imagine Fallout but they went to space. That's this entire game in a nutshell. It's one gorgeous adventure into a brand new sci-fi world of excitement, it's got plants, it's got strange creatures, all of which you can kill. And just like Fallout New Vegas, if there's an NPC you don't like, don't worry, just shoot them. The game will work afterwards. Every single thing in this game can have a bullet put between its head. And you know what, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Now over here we have a tiny little rat goblin creature, um, and we're just going to hit it once. As you can see, we do 2,198 damage. This is not an appropriate amount of damage for the game. Something terrible has happened. Or perhaps something very fantastic. Now sprats aren't exactly the most powerful being in the game, in fact they're probably the weakest. So instead to demonstrate the power of the OP sniper build, I'm going to be walking into the Edgewater community here, and we're going to be defeating every single NPC inside. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, because all of the NPCs can be defeated, why not? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So when it comes to being a sniper, you probably want to get yourself up to a nice point of elevation, although in this game, finding such a point is a bit of a challenge. What I'm going to do is to get my way over to a position of advantage. Oh, and also, hello there, Julius, my friend. Uh, I'd like to steal your, or just everything on your person, actually. That's fine, um, because I'm a very high level character. So don't mind me, I'm just going to sneak around behind you. Uh, in fact, actually, um, how about I finish you off? Uh, because really, there's no need to have Julius, our friend here, existing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Goodbye, Julius. Uh, 2,300 damage. He's gone now, ladies and gentlemen, and no one's any the wiser. Now, what you want to do is come out here, and it's time to start picking off most of the residents. Well, there we go, corporate guard. Yes. Snipe. Ah, oh, 2,000 damage, my friend. Uh, thank you very much. Oh dear, but these two residents have seen me, and they are unhappy. Well, I'm sorry, residents. You only have a health pool of, what, 95? Yeah, that's not good enough, I'm afraid. Oh, look, there's another guard. A bushk. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? How on earth do you create a character of this build anyway? Well, let's sit back, relax, and make a brand new character. As I show off the fastest way to get exceedingly overpowered in this relatively easy game. Now, you might be sat there wondering, hang on a second, Spiff, how come your sniper rifle is dealing so much damage? Well, basically, if we take a look at our skills, I've completely maxed out the long gun stat to the point where my long guns provide a 301% crit chance. Equally, my sneak is up to 100, meaning I have a increased 77% damage when in sneak. Then also there's a bunch of skill unlocks, meaning that I deal even more bonus damage and also an extra 20% weak spot damage. You can then add 
that on top of plus 25% damage when alone in a party, an increased 20% extra headshot damage, a decreased ranged weapon sway, as well as a 100% bonus for the skills that you have on your armor. It's pretty powerful. In fact, there's basically no way to stop my character at this point. They physically can't be defeated. So how do you go about making a Riano Keeves of your own? Well, it's rather simple, ladies and gentlemen. You can just immediately one-hit all of the uh, residents around here with your MLG sniper rifle whilst they try and deal measly amounts of damage to your godlike being, but you know, honestly there's not much they can do. A pushk, a pushk. Oh, it's just easy, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, residents. You guys really weren't built for combat in comparison to the legendary godlike Riano Keeves. I don't even understand how it hits, because according to this reticle, I have no chance of hitting, yet I just do. Hello there, residents. Boop and boop. Yeah, it turns out everything's just a one hit in this area, and also they can't even fight back, which is rather unique. But ladies and gentlemen, just how powerful is it? Because I simply showed off how powerful it was on the starting planet. Well, instead, ladies and gentlemen, I've jumped to the final mission of the game to demonstrate just how powerful it is. Now remember, spoiler warning! Although to be honest, it's nothing too crazy, we're just simply going to be shooting some of the bad guys. In this particular playthrough, I sided with the people against the evil mega corporation. Right, so what you want to do is get yourself down, crouch down into a corner so you go into stealth mode, and begin opening up on all of these corporate troopers. Sorry corporate troopers. Abushk, 1000 damage. Combat drone. Bam! 1000 damage. Now we can actually look at the corporate troopers and see that they have a health pool of 618, which is actually relatively impressive. It's nothing to be sniffed at. This commander over here has a 700 health pool. The only issue is, against my sniper rifles, it's completely and utterly pathetic. Yeah, it does feel good to just one hit everything. It does feel nice and powerful if I'm honest. Anyway, it's time we push on into the final mission. Now the issue with this game is that it's designed in a very RPG way, meaning you should be able to finish it in whatever playstyle you have, meaning if you went for a lockpick stealth focus build, you 100% can stealth your way through the final mission of the game. It would just be very strange to do so. But that creates a bit of an issue because it means we can effectively stealth our way into the final mission of the game and become even more powerful. So what you want to do, stealth your way over to here, stealth on up, one hit that guy and just simply walk away. And the best thing is because our stealth is so high, these guys don't even know who did it. See look, there he is. This guy's got no idea who I am. As you can see, everyone's rather alert, but they haven't quite worked out where I am just yet. Oh, I'm so sorry, corporate commanders. You actually were meant to be powerful. Oh yes, hello there, corporate commander. Oh dear, oh dear, what a lovely way to level up honestly though. Oh, that was gorgeous. I mean, I've leveled up, what do I even invest it in? Oh, I suppose confidence is quite good. Your next attack after killing an enemy is a guaranteed critical hit. Well, that's a surefire way to start wrecking this up to ludicrous levels. Also, boom headshot's quite good. Headshot kills deal 25% of their damage to enemies within 2.5 meters. Or well, considering our headshot damage is several thousand, that can often make uh, this build even more overpowered. Anyway, what you want to do is walk around this corner, corporate a trooper boom he's dead our next hit is going to be a critical hit no matter what so bam stealthing over there boom 2000 damage easy peasy what's this a corporate commander another critical hit easy 2000 what's this a medical drone 1500 damage don't ask how a bullet against a high armored medical drone is able to do that it just is ladies and gentlemen that's just the way the world works sometimes oh corporate technician i'm so sorry my friend you guys just aren't powerful at all part of me kind of feel sorry for you guys. I mean, you've got what, a level 25 corporate trooper over here? They're just all one hits though. Were they all meant to be one hits? Who knows, ladies and gentlemen. These guys are like five levels higher than I am, and yet they're all just one hit kills. Hmm. Evidently someone was asleep when it came to actually balancing this game. What are you, level 25 corporate trooper? Big hazard next to your name saying, be careful, you're dangerous. You have an armor of 44 as well, so that's going to negate 44 of my damage, but I do 1,900 damage so it doesn't make much of a difference. Hello there corporate guard. Oh you've spotted me. Well hello. You're dead I'm afraid. Sorry friend. Anyway I think that's actually the entire level completely cleared out. Oh, and also when it comes to the actual vending machine which I'm buying goods off of here do not raise any questions as to why I have 1 billion credits. Just let it be okay. I'll show you how to make infinite money. It's just a magical thing ladies and gentlemen. Just don't ask too many questions okay or they'll start sending people after you like they sent after me. Also a fun item you 
100% want to grab a bunch of are the Focus It All capsules, which basically mean your sniper critical damage goes up, you get extra damage to headshots, weak spots, so we're going to be using that to hopefully one hit the final boss. I'm just going to kind of cheese my way through the final level here and then hopefully run my way over to the exit zone where hopefully I'm going to get my way over to the final boss. Of course, the best way to do all of that is to just quite simply cheese all of the enemies, as this final area has a lot of ranged enemies, which quite simply can't even shoot back. The issue is my kind of like setup actually works with almost every gun, so I have a flamethrower here, and you'll notice my first hit with a flamethrower does several hundred damage, but just because of the stealth critical hit. That's a flamethrower, ladies and gentlemen. Really should not be able to do that. Right, now we've finally made our way to the final boss fight of the game against Ram here. As you can see, he's a massive mechanical death monster with a large amount of health. Are we actually able to see? No, we're not. Oh yes, he has a health of 8,575, by far the most strongest enemy in the game. So we're going to be seeing just how far we can get when it comes to defeating our friend Ram here. Now, luckily Ram does not actually activate when you waltz on over to him. In fact, we can still fall the way over here if we wanted to, but my goodness, he is one powerful monster. So what we're going to do to give ourselves a slight edge is immediately we're going to chug this fantastic capsule giving us increased critical damage for 20 seconds, increased mind attributes, more increased mind attributes, reduced weapon spread and sway, yep just chug all of that stuff, as you can see we've hit maximum intelligence meaning we have plus 50% critical damage, if we max out our perception even more we could technically have even more damage but you know there's only so far you can get, alright let's do this ladies and gentlemen, BAM! 1500 damage, 800 damage, more damage ladies Ladies and gentlemen, more! Right, we have got him down to quite low health, but sadly it's not technically enough. This boy is powerful. Let us make our jobs easier by sniping that drone and then using the critical hit on Ram, and I think that's Ram dead. Yep, yeah, that's Ram dead. Okay, that's the final boss in the game done. Well, that was easy. Um, thanks game. That was good. Thanks for all of these parts. Yep, nice. Good game. Good game, very good. Ah, it really is as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and look, of course, here we have Sophie, the next, uh, end boss of the game. She only has seven health, mind you, so, uh, you can't exactly call her much of a challenge, so let's go for execute, and she's gone. Right, that's the second final boss of the game done. Uh, GG, ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. So, how do we go about getting infinite money? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for me to demonstrate. Now that we've defeated all of the actual major bosses in the game, it's time for me to load back a previous save and show you guys how to make some tasty profits. So, what you're going to want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is respec your character, because at the moment, my character is specialized solely for being a ridiculously over the top powerful sniper boy. Instead, you want to go to this respec machine and redo all of your points. Instead, invest everything into dialogue and then continue to max out persuade. The next skill you're going to want to get up there is engineering, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure to raise engineering nice and high. And for perks, you're going to want to grab a few more bits, decrease in vendor prices, and then just any other perks to simply fill out the perk tree a bit. Then what you want to do is grab snake oil salesman for increasing the vendor buying prices. Don't worry about Solar Q, you don't actually need that. And then honestly, everything else is completely and utterly irrelevant. It doesn't really provide any bonuses for you. And what I strongly recommend you grab is Armor Master to increase the skill bonus you receive from armor. And then for everything else, once again, it doesn't particularly matter. There we go. Those are all the perks you should need. A lot of them are just generally slightly wasted. What you're then going to want to do is make sure you have Felix in your party and level him up to have slightly better persuasion abilities. And then what you're going to want to do is go pick up the other companion which I've left behind. So we've come back to Edgewater. It's not the best city if I'm honest, but it does have a companion for you to grab. Now, whilst we do have the best companion in the world, Felix, uh, you're going to want to go grab Parvati over here. I know. I never grab them, but they are kind of necessary for a money exploit, ladies and gentlemen. So hey, we're going to use their help. And well, bam, she's now going to assist us. She can join our party. Now that we have Parvati as well, this is fantastic news as we can simply go on over to her in our menu and well, bam, we can start spending some perk points. What you're immediately going to want to do is make sure that she increases your engineering abilities. But most importantly, Mod Finder is what you want. She provides an extra 10% chance to extract mods in the field. Splendid stuff. Those are some quite nice bonuses. Now, in order to get unlimited money in the game, what you're going to want to do is grab Felix and Parvati over here and lob your way onto the Groundbreaker. Now, the Groundbreaker is a fantastic hub of trading and there's a lot of friends and lovely traders to be had. So what you're going to want to do 
immediately upon boarding is hop onto these vending machines. Now these vending machines, they're full of trash if I'm honest. There's nothing really too fantastic there. I can see us. It's mostly just garbage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a unique way of making money in this game. And it's generally best attempted with this lovely guy, Martin Callahan here. Now, as you can see, he provides us a 20% discount on anything we purchase. As fun as it would be if there was just a straight exploit which allowed me to buy the light ammo from him here for 60 and then sell it back to him for a higher cost, there is a slight limitation in the game. They know that people are going to be trying this. Instead, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be cheesing this man's moon helmets. Oh my, these are some fantastic moon helmets indeed. So what you're going to want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is grab all of his fantastic moon helmets right here. Just buy all of them. It doesn't matter. As long as they're less than 100, they're worth buying. Then if he has any extra weapons, make sure to grab those as well. And also run on into here as there's a lovely lady with hopefully some more things to buy. Hello, Gladys. Now, sadly, Gladys over here doesn't have any fantastic weapons for me to steal. What a shame. Also, make sure to run for all of these vending machines and see if they have any cheap weaponry, but sadly, none of these ones do. Now, after stealing everything from there, make sure to run round to Ike's armory over here. Hi, Ike. You also offer a 70% discount. Now, Ike, hopefully you have some cheap armor for me. Oh, yes, you do. So buy just all of this cheap armor. It's exceedingly cheap. I mean, just look at it. It's so cheap. It's 15 each. That's fantastic. Now, whilst we're looking at the armor, you might also notice that there are some unique items here. These are weapons mods. You can basically strap these to armor to increase your abilities. Some of them are fantastic, like, for example, increasing all of your tech skills, all dialogue skills and leadership skills. That's always a fun one to have. Make sure to always grab a silver tongue kit if you see it lying around. They're fantastic. Now, what you're going to want to do is grab all of the cheap items, which are generally less than about a 90. You don't really want to go above that, else you risk losing your money, especially those cheap armors. Make sure to grab them. Now, because of our fantastic personal skills, we can break down some of our items here, especially all the cheap ones. Now, we have a slight percentage chance of every time we break one of these downs, we receive a armor mod. Now, what we're going to do is get our Moon Man helmet here and just hit E to break it down. As you can see, we get some armor parts. We do it again, more armor parts. This time, we gain insulated. Now, if we go and check our inventory, what is insulated? Well, it has a cell value of 150 and it basically increases your armor rating. Ah, oh, fantastic. Immediately, we've turned a profit. Once again, Again, simply repeat and break down all of this very cheap armor. And we gain two fuck kits and one hunter's kit. Very good. Wow, that fuck kit sells for a fair amount, and those hunter kits do very good as well. Right, we could have used some of these when we were building some of our ranged weapons. These are great. I also realized I completely forgot to show off my character, Riano Keeves. I mean, look at him. He's a slightly grizzled war veteran, Riano Keeves, but uh, he's perfect, ladies and gentlemen. He's absolutely perfect. So anyway, now that we have those fantastic items, it only cost us a couple of hundred to actually buy them, but what we're going to be able to do is run on back to our lovely friend over here and simply sell the items that he sold to us right back to him. Hello there, Martin. Now, our lovely friend Martin here gives us a 70% discount, but equally, he buys for a high price as well. So what we're able to do is this armor here, which is insulated, which we got from grinding up a bunch of really cheap items, we can just sell straight back to him. Same for the hunter's kit and same for the fug kit. And with that, we turn a profit on everything he gave us. Oh, thank you very much, my friend. And also, if you want the very vendor inventories to reset then quite simply fall asleep in a bed for three days and come back. It's as easy as that ladies and gentlemen. That's how you get unlimited money. Just speak to the moon man. He's got all of the unlimited money. Thank you moon man. Thank you. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I think this just about wraps up some of my favourite exploits which I've discovered so far for the Outer Worlds, of course. If you've stumbled upon any which haven't been featured in today's video, don't be afraid to give me a shout, and I'm sure we can see if we can make your exploit become a reality in a video. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit, and if you've enjoyed today's video, then hey, feel free to give it a like, and why not hop down into the comment section and tell me about the glorious cup of tea you've enjoyed today. As always, a huge and special thank you to each and every one of our fantastic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Genuinely, without your support, we wouldn't be able to be playing jazzy games like The Outer Worlds. Thank you very much. And hey, if you're sat there wondering, hmm, I quite enjoyed this video, I wonder what else spiffing videos I could enjoy watching. Heck, maybe I've already seen it once, maybe I want to see it again. Well, why not watch this video right here? It's been hand chosen by myself to be exactly perfect for you, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I've been the spiffing Brit. I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day. It's goodbye for now.